Rhinoplast or bioplastic. Pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Really common question. So we're going to cover that next in Pros and Cons by Piercer, Season 2, Episode number 34. So you might want to just stick around. For those who are new to the channel, first off, welcome to the channel. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, but if it's the first time you're here, you may not know who I am. My name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I talk to you about a level of expertise that comes from me in the body piercing industry for well over, well, 27 years. What we're going to talk about today is bioplast or bioplastic. Uh, it is a flexible tubing type material that can be threaded. It can be um, autoclaved. It can be used in fresh piercings, blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to be better for you and everything else. I first off want to say I don't suggest wearing this stuff for any length of time in your body. With the exception of possibly if you have to go into for some type of medical treatment. There really is no reason to do that, uh, to wear this stuff. Um, and we'll get into a lot of that later. But I just want to point that out from the start because a lot of people, they just listen to the pros and then leave. They don't they don't pay attention to the cons. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, let's, let's move on to some other things about bioplastic. The term bioplastic is a term used to describe a uh, plastic material that's made from renewable biomass sources including vegetable oil, fats, vegetable fats, cornstarch, straw, wood chips, sawdust, food waste, and various other things. That isn't the stuff that we're talking about. Um, however, uh, what exactly the stuff we're talking about is made out of is up for debate. Now, uh, biocompatible uh, polymers such as Tigon, medical surgical tubing, um, PTFE or Teflon, formerly known as PMFK. Um, it's also known as bio Biolast um, or biocompatible poly uh, polymers. All of this stuff is kind of grouped under this this saying. And the problem is, is that most manufacturers are not really going to be very uh, detailed exactly what that material is made out of. Um, and the problem with this particular material is a lot of it comes from less than reputable manufacturers. It's easy enough to say. Now, the APP, Association of Professional Pier Piercers, is kind of a, a good compass to figure out exactly what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, though they tend to lean towards whatever amount of uh, pressure they're getting from their membership and some cursory uh, uh research but they're knowledgeable people they have used it in most cases they know exactly or somewhat what they're talking about so what they consider biocompatible pol uh, polymers is tigon medical surgical tubing s50 hl or s54 hl ptfe and bioplast i called it biolast didn't i now oh, it's bioplast now, uh, you need to verify, even in that case, that it is S or USP uh, 6 compatible. Um, the thing about this stuff is none of it has been approved by the, regardless of what manufacturers claim or people that sell this stuff, it has never been approved by the FDA or the CDC for internal use in the human body. The reality is, is most of the stuff is designed to be used as... Uh, um, for uh, IVs and getting fluids into the body, it had not sitting in the body for a long period of time. Now, the history of this stuff is kind of a little. Uh, eh. uh, basically, it was used or uh, developed for uh, products for applications for outside of the body. Um, it was never really designed to be inserted in the body for long periods of time, as I already said. Uh, the thing about some of this was, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, uh, the PTFE, it is actually Teflon. 
Uh, there's been some uh, speculation over the years, and nothing's been proved one way or another, that ingesting Teflon or Teflon using Teflon cookware may lead to some medical issues. Uh, the, K, the the study's still out, the, the jury's still out on that, but if you uh, are concerned about that, you definitely don't want to put this stuff in your body. Now, before we move on to the pros, the advantages of this particular product, um, I want to ask you, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, hit, hit subscribe. Click on that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. Now it's time to move on to the pros, the advantages, the things that make you go, yes, this is the thing for me. I know it. Starting with number one, it's cheap. It's very inexpensive. It's not an expensive product by comparison to what you're going to pay for a implant grade titanium alloy piece or, you know, or even stain, implant grade stainless steel or niobium or glass or anything else. This stuff is cheap. There's a reason why plastic's often referred to as cheap. It feels cheap and plastic. It's because it's cheap. So it's very inexpensive. Number two, it can be cut to length, meaning that if you're putting it in a piercing, you can cut off the ends to match that particular uh, piercing. Um, it's kind of hard to do that when you're working with a metal object or glass object. Uh, you just can't do that. It comes in one size, and that's it. Of course, it comes in various sizes, but the size it is is the size it's staying. Number three, non-conductive. Uh, this will not be affected if you have to go in for surgery or something and or you're going in for some type of scan and they make you take out of your metal jewelry. This is not going to be an issue with this material. Um, that's one of the ways that I would suggest using it if you absolutely have to. Um, the... the I, Beyond that, to be honest with you, I think glass is a much better choice. It tends to be easier to keep in the body longer, a little bit more secure, and not quite as rough as the plastic stuff that's out there. Now, understand, I'm not talking about acrylic, and I'm not talking about monofilament. Those are two different animals, and we'll probably get to those in a different video. Number four. It can be autoclaved. Yes, you can take this stuff and put it through an autoclave. It's not going to be destroyed or what have you. Um, it works perfectly fine. Uh, and the autoclave, uh, not an issue. So it can be used on fresh piercings in theory. Number five, it's flexible. So it can kind of bend and move uh, to uh, whatever that area of the body it's in. One thing I didn't cover earlier that should have been in the pros is that it is threadable. You can take threaded jewelry or threaded ends and thread it into the tubing or onto the tubing. I guess that's an advantage. Well, before I move on to the cons, the disadvantages, the things we don't like, uh, if you uh, like merch, you like swag, you like T-shirts, you like uh, fanny packs, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Plus, it'll make you look cool. Now it's time to move on to the cons, the disadvantages, the things we don't like, the things that go, ah, no, you're not bringing that, putting that stuff anywhere near me. Number one. Over time, it will stiffen and discolor. Now, this could be an issue because it makes it very breakable. It could also mean that parts of it are going to chip off and then get into your bloodstream. All kinds of other ugly possibilities. So those people that it's like, oh, I'm wearing this because I don't want to damage my teeth, you have to understand you have to change this stuff repetitively over and over again. Don't just put a piece in and leave it in for 10 years. You're going to have problems, and it could possibly lead to some issues because... And I'll get into this. I don't know exactly what it's made out of. And number two, in many cases, it's not certified as biocompatible material. Um, here's the thing is the manufacturers have been trying to play it up as it be, is being certified for use and et cetera. But the only certification for bioplast uh, listed is for building materials. Uh, it isn't listed for medical use in any way, shape or form. The other thing is, is nobody knows exactly what the secret formula is on this stuff and exactly what's in there. So a lot of times you're kind of buyer beware. You might, yeah. There hasn't been any extensive testing on long-term wear or the effect it may have on the human body or any body or any animal. Oh, by the way, for those vegans out there that are, you know, are animal-friendly people, 
The stuff that is tested is tested on animals, just to let you know that. And number three, it can damage piercings. Um, because when they cut it, they trim it, they're usually using scissors or some type of flat, blunt instrument. This can cause little uh, rough edges, odd angles, et cetera. Putting that in the jewel or putting that in the piercing could cause it to scratch or tear at that piercing on the inside and then start that healing process over again. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes it can be kind of a bit on the rough side, especially the low end crappy stuff, and that will damage a piercing regardless of how long you've had it. Sometimes the seams from the mold is not properly polished off of it. That could cause problems too. Number four, and this one's going to dispel a lot of rumors and upset a lot of people. It can do damage just as much as a metal piece can in your mouth. Reality is this is hard plastic. Hard plastic rubbing against gums is going to cause as much damage as metal against gums. Uh, the only difference is, is in the process, the metal is probably not going to break down and start dissolving and you start ingesting it. So, yes, it can cause damage. Is it a little less than metal? Possibly. But the reality is, it still causes damage. Number five, my one of my favorites. Uh, there has been a, a number of studies that bacteria does tend to congregate more towards plastic than other materials, including metal. Um, in most of the information and studies that I've seen, I think there's basically one, stated that there was more bacteria in piercings that were healing or were in a healed piercing um, when they were wearing the plastic jewelry than there was when they were wearing metal jewelry. Something about it is kind of like, you know, anybody that has a cupboard at home that's made of plastic, you know you have to bleach it and clean it on a regular basis because bacteria grow on it. Same thing with a piercing. You, uh, unlike metal where it's a little easier to clean, your body can get rid of that stuff a lot easier. Plastic, it tends to kind of absorb and stay there. I don't know why. There's probably a scientific reason for that. If you know it, Put it in the comments, or maybe I'm totally off of the absorption. Put that in the comments. And the last one, which is a bonus one, number six, piercing doesn't form straight. Because the tubing is flexible, in some cases, especially longer piercings, it will form in these weird lines and so forth instead of a straight, like most piercings do, when you put metal jewelry in it. Now, this might not be a problem as long as you're not switching to metal jewelry or glass or something that's stiff. But if you do, it's going to create some problems because it's going to agitate the piercing and possibly lead to something like bumps. Uh, it may make it difficult to get the jewelry in and out, especially with something like a nostril piercing. Um, it's just not stiff. It doesn't hold things in place the way that a metal piece of jewelry would. Now, one of the selling points of this at one point was to do industrials and other multiple piercing connected, jewelry connected piercings. Once again, that's a problem. It's going to shift or move. Your body's always going to push those piercings where it feels most comfortable. So you might do it with it. It might be perfectly straight when you do it, but over time, the bioplasty gives and it ends up like this. Back to life, kids. Sorry. Well, uh, like I said before, if you have any comments or anything to add, please do so in the comments. I usually answer them when I have time. But till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.